I'm in the home of Mr. Nicholas Wilson. Um, hi, Nicholas. Hi. Yeah. Otherwise known as Mr. Ethical. <laughs> Could you tell us how you got that name, please, Nicholas? Yes. Um, I used to work for a law firm uh, called Whiteman's, yeah. in your neck of the woods in Liverpool. Yeah. Uh, and I, for a long, for a long time, I'd acted for the John Lewis Partnership. Okay. And they sold their accounts, their store accounts, to a bank called HFC Bank. Okay. Which is owned by. I know them. Well, they're owned by HSBC Bank. Okay. And they specialise in subprime lending mm -hmm. and so on. Anyway, as soon as the, the bank took over the Joe Lewis accounts, they started adding illegal charges okay. onto people's debts. And I told the bank, the, uh, the first meeting I had with them, what, the, what they were doing was illegal. Yeah. Uh, and that was the beginning of my problems. And I was telling the partners at Wakeman's that it was illegal, they shouldn't be doing it. And the partner in charge, Andrew Cox, used to call me Mr. Ethical yeah. because I kept complaining that what they were doing was illegal. So that's why I call myself Mr. Ethical. Yeah. You got a hard time, didn't you, there? Uh, 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 doing the right thing. Well, I, I reported them to the Law Society and I was immediately sacked. I never got any support oh, okay. from the partners. But as soon as I reported them to the Law Society, they called me in for a meeting. We, yeah. you know, within two days, in yeah. fact, it's the quickest they'd ever moved, yeah. yeah. When I reported it, they set up a thing called the Solicitor's Regulation Authority, and it was yeah. them that dealt with it. And they upheld it, they said yes, it was illegal what they were doing, it, yeah. was, it was what's called a contingency fee, which is illegal. Yeah. But they didn't take any action, they said it only happened in a small number of cases. Well, as I've said, yeah. six, five, six hundred thousand cases worth about a billion pounds. When I first returned to England, I wanted to, because I'd been out of the system for so long, yeah. I bought a computer on high purchase, yeah. on, on the From tech, and the Dixon's or Curry's. Curry's. Yeah, well that's HFC. And it was HFC. Yeah. HFC. Yeah. So I've been that as well. <laughs> well they, they did the store accounts for John Lewis. Yeah. Well, John Lewis was actually HSBC. Uh, but the HFC did the store accounts for Dixon's, Curry's, PC World, Furniture Village, yeah, yeah. B&Q, you know, half so the high street massive stores, fraud, it's massive, it? is it? Well, I calculate about a billion pounds. Billion quid. Yeah. It's not people who can least afford it, isn't it? It's people who've like so bought a well, the, the, Apart from the store card things, yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I don't know your background, but you, you go into Curry's and buy a, a computer, that's that's just normal consumer. Yeah. But what HFC specialised in, they had branches in shopping centres and stuff, in okay. some of the poorer areas. Yeah. And they specialised in subprime lending, and they, okay. lent, they lent money, made, made personal loans to people who couldn't get a loan from other ah, banks. So they had very high interest rate. Um, and and that's all they did. I mean, it wasn't a normal bank. You couldn't have a current account or anything. Yeah. They just lent to poor people. Yeah, yeah. So yes, they they were targeting the poorest. Yeah. And adding on sixteen point four percent to the debt. So if you had a ten thousand pound debt, they'd add one thousand six hundred forty yeah. pounds before the lawyers had done any work. It was just. Bull and people are, I mean, disabled people are getting the money snatched off them. Um, People, you know, we all know what people are suffering under this austerity, and yeah. all caused by that. I and mean, the, and the fact is, you know, the people who have been affected by this fraud, the average charge, we're not talking peanuts, the average charge is £1,500, which would be a year's uh, energy supply yeah, for Yeah, groceries, energy, yeah, yeah, yeah. It would make a huge difference to these people uh, if, if they only knew about it, but they don't know about it because the media, stum, that's disgusting, aren't they? We went through all that austerity, as they call it, as they to call it, poverty. Went through all that suffering because the banks got us into it, and so we bail out the banks, we buy the banks. George Osborne turns up, not even in Parliament, in the Mansion House, and just sells it off. Mm. Billion, not a billion quid, mm. gone. Mm. Not a word. Not, yeah. no one. Not well, the RBS sell-off is going gonna, is gonna to lose fourteen billion. Fourteen billion. Yeah. And the cuts, the, the, the welfare cuts they want to make are 13 billion. Yeah, you know? exactly. I set up a business to try and get money back from people. And 
in order for that to succeed, I needed uh, county court judgment details. So I had contact. So if you'd had a judgment against you from HFC Bank, I could cop right to you and say, you're going to get to this money back. And I would have, and I did do for some people, I would have claimed the money back through the financial ombudsman service because uh -huh. it's free. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't say to you, let's go back to court because you have to pay fees and yeah. so on. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and a lot of people just don't have the money or the inclination to do that. So mm -hmm. I was going to do it through the ombudsman. Anyway, I applied to the Ministry of Justice. They, the, 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 the register of county court judgments is yeah. administered by a company called Registry Trust who, is, who have a contract with the Ministry of Justice. And I said to them, I want this information. I basically said, no, you can't have it. Yeah, so it was covered up by the Ministry of Justice. Uh, but the worst is the Financial Conduct Authority. Last year, I did a Freedom of Information Act request okay. to the, it was now the Financial Conduct Authority. Yeah. They wrote back, and bearing in mind this is a, a formal reply to a Freedom of Information Act request, okay. they wrote back and said we didn't do anything because the OFT had already dealt with this in 2010, which is yeah. true. And they said, um, and the, 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 the bank's agreements with customers allowed them to have these charges. Now, in 2010, November 2010, the Office of Fair Trading did make an order against okay. the bank time to stop adding these charges until they changed their terms and conditions of their contracts, <laughs> which meant they weren't entitled yeah, to add these yeah, charges. Yeah, yeah. So the FCA is telling me to go away. I'm still shouting from the rooftops, and uh, in the meantime, everybody that's covering it up is mm -hmm. getting rewarded. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Also, I mean, what I really want to talk about is um, Cameron should, shouldn't be in power <coughs> uh, because of the way he's covered this all up yeah, yeah. and how the Tories have put an HSBC director to the head of the BBC. Yeah. Um, having watched your performance this afternoon, I've got to say this to you, that either you knew and you say, if you, well, I, I if you knew you were alluding in tax evasion. I, I categorically deny or that. Or you didn't know. And I think in that case, you're either incredibly naive or totally incompetent. And I don't think that the record that you've shown of your performance here uh, as a guardian of HSBC gives me the confidence that you should be the guardian of the BBC licence fee pairs money. Let's talk to our political editor, Nick Robinson, who's at Westminster for us now. It's a massive economic choice that has been made to cut the deficit or try to do it this far and this fast. But it is also a huge political calculation that the Chancellor is making on behalf of the coalition government. The calculation he's making is that people will prefer big cuts in welfare, really dramatic cuts in welfare spending, in order to try to protect other areas of spending. Now, I say try because there are still very, very big cuts in spending, even in those areas that the government has sought to protect. Um, and, and Nick, even after an hour-long speech that we had from George Osborne today, there's still lots of details we don't have. That's absolutely right. This is line one, if you like, of what will be a massive and long-running political saga. What the Chancellor did is try and write a story for us today, that he is seeking to deal with a deficit, that he's protecting health and education, overseas aid, for example, and he's doing it by cutting welfare and cutting waste. He says the title for this saga is Back from the Brink. Others may say it's over the edge. All right, Nick, thank you, and uh, well done for trying to... Get away from that person behind you. Let Others may say it's over the edge. You should be ashamed.
ashamed of yourself, mate. You should be ashamed. Shame on you, mate. Shame on you. That's the same thing to do, man. You're ashamed of yourself. I'm not really ashamed of myself. You're ashamed of yourself. Why should I be ashamed of myself? As you will know, HSBC will find $1.9 billion in the, in the US for yeah. money laundering, Mexico yeah. money laundering. Well, this is, for the, this is just for, honestly, for normal people know that. I mean, even the man in the pub, they know what HSBC is. Everybody knows HSBC. Yeah. They're yeah. the biggest yeah. criminal bank. Honestly, they for that. Yeah. But an American whistleblower recently has, has said that Cameron, in March of that year, I can't remember, I think it was 2013 when the fine was imposed at the end of the year, but in, in March of that year, Cameron had a meeting with Osborne, uh, with, with um, Obama, yeah. when he pleaded with him not to prosecute right, HSBC yeah. Bank. Yeah, yeah. Because they would lose their license in the States if, they, if the prosecution had gone ahead. They, yeah. So they did a deal, they paid, you know, perhaps one day's profits yeah. or something, and, and they got rid of it. So Cameron is deeply involved yeah. with HSBC. His great-great-grandfather used to be the head of That's HSBC right, yeah. in the UK. Just when you thought the banking sector's PR crisis couldn't get any worse, along comes a revelation that banking giant HSBC has helped thousands of wealthy clients evade hundreds of millions of pounds worth of tax. A whistleblower in Switzerland worked with a team of investigative journalists from news outlets like The Guardian and Panorama in 2010 to expose the extent to which the bank helped the rich conceal assets to dodge taxes, leaking a huge trove of files on secret Swiss accounts run by the bank. HSBC now faces criminal investigations in the US, France, Belgium and Argentina, but not in the UK. And this despite the fact the bank is based in this country and the leak included details of almost 7,000 British clients. Senior politicians in HM Revenue and Customs are accused of failing to act over claims. But David Cameron has defended his government's record on tackling tax evasion and his decision in 2010 to appoint former HSBC boss Stephen Green to his government as a trade minister. Well, Stephen Green was an excellent trade minister. He did a good job. It was announced that Cameron was going to make Stephen Green, who was the chair of HSBC, a lord. It was covered up it, yeah. to prevent embarrassing Gre uh, Cameron uh, when he was making Stephen Green yeah. board. <laughs> but this gets worse. So uh, but I'd also add that no government has done more than this one to crack down on tax evasion and aggressive tax avoidance. put it absolutely at the head of my G8 agenda to make sure there's more tax transparency, that big companies pay their taxes properly, and that we raise money from people previously uh, evading and avoiding taxes. We'll go on doing that as a government. In the meantime, everybody that's covering it up is mm. getting rewarded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, I'm on benefits. This, this is the thing. <laughs> That's how I actually got to know you, because um, I saw what had happened. I knew you had, a, a, like, a top position in London, top, you know, big job in London, lawyer. And, and then how did, like, I don't... Listen, this, this is for you to talk about anything you want, because <coughs> as much as you want, as little as you want. I mean, I know... Can we just yeah, say, oh, stop it, yeah. <coughs> Would you like to grab a drink? No, I'm alright.
I just need to clear it. Well, right, as I say, call us to an alt whenever you want. If there's anything you want to add or anything. Um, like, I, I, I don't even want to start mentioning your private business, but if, I mean, if you want to talk about that, because I know it, it did get you into difficulty, didn't it? Like, really, my situation? Could, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm, well, I've been on benefits for, well, a long time. I mean, I've had two jobs since I was sacked, but both consultancy jobs mm -hmm. in the law firms. Do you um, want a drink? No, I'm okay, thanks. Um, but uh, I'm now on ESA employment support allowance. Okay. Uh, because depression and, and yeah. I can't concentrate for, um, yeah, the, yeah. I, the only thing I can concentrate on is this, because yeah, I know yeah, it yeah. inside out. And, yeah. But I spend most of my life on Twitter because it's short. Short, sharp. Short, sharp. I mean, I can't read a newspaper article of any length. No. You know. And last year, I mean, this is a good and a bad story, but last year I was thrown off benefits by Atos. They said I wasn't depressed. Uh -huh. I was, so I had no benefit, I had no money at all for four months while I was being re reconsidered. And during that period I was being repossessed <sighs> by my mortgage company, which is Northern Rock, which was the first bank, Northern Rock was, yeah, yeah. First bank to be bought out by the government. So my house is now owned by the government. Yeah. And I kept saying to them, look, give me, give me a bit more time. And I tried to explain my situation. They said, well, it... it <laughs> We're repossessing you because it's in the interest of the taxpayers. Well, my mortgage is five hundred odd pounds. If they repossess me, I'll be entitled to housing benefit. Uh, and I can claim yeah, up to a thousand pounds a month. Uh, so it's not in the interest of the taxpayers. Uh, but anyway, so I was being repossessed. I was taken to court, um, but I got bailed out by followers on Twitter. Yeah. I got donations oh, and, and got my arrears paid off. That's nice. I got the, proceedings thrown out. That was that, fantastic. That's heartwarming that. It it's knows, heartwarming but, but the decent, good problem is I've got to do it again. Yeah, my, my supporters on Twitter have uh, yeah. given me great support. It keeps me going because I live alone, you know, my outlet, to, I'm a bit of a recluse and my outlet to the world is, is Twitter. Is Twitter yeah. uh, but it would, if I lost this house it would be disastrous. I mean, like, mm. Yeah, of course, yeah. Of course, yeah. Do you regret? Do you regret? Well, I, you saw, you, out? well, you said you saw that BBC did, yeah. thing. That's what I'm asking. asking. Well, my, pub, well, my <laughs> public position on that is is don't blow the whistle. Not not in yeah, not yeah. in finance. I mean, of course, in the NHS, it's a sad thing or to say, life yeah. and death. I wouldn't recommend it <laughs> because they're more powerful than you. <coughs> and they will destroy you. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, they destroyed yeah. me. I'm still shouting from the rooftops, and, yeah. and everything I'm talking about is true, and yeah, yeah. all the evidence is on my website. My yeah. website is nicholaswilson.com, yeah. so people could check everything I discuss, because mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going out there publicly stating yeah. that HSBC committed a billion pound fraud yeah, if it's yeah. not true, and they haven't sued me. Well, sure.